Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a simple campfire under the stars. Now in this painting we're not using any fancy mediums, no fancy paint colors, just a straightforward simple painting that anyone can do. Now if you're one who struggles with the fan brush, stick around because I'm going to give you some good pointers that hopefully kind of demystify the fan brush a little bit and get you ready to paint with it. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials. Now let's get started. Okay, today, as usual, we have a 12 by 16 inch canvas, fresh out of the package. I have not added any additional gesso to it. And over here on my palette, I have the colors I'm gonna use in the sky, and that's Diox Purple, Thalo Blue, Mars Black, and Titanium White. And you can use any colors that you like. You don't have to use these same colors. Now today, you can see I've got my water jar here that I use to clean my brushes in. And the reason I wanna make sure that this one is visible to you today is because in my group, there's been a little bit of conversation about, you know, leaving brushes in the water and how long is too long to leave a brush in the water. So I want you to keep an eye on this jar throughout the painting and I want you to notice how long I leave a brush sitting in the water. So to get started, I'm gonna take my number 12 cloud brush and I'm just lightly gonna dunk it into the water. I didn't mush it in there, I just set it in the water, and then I'm gonna kinda of wipe it off pretty good on my paper towel. I just want the tiniest hint of moisture in there, and I wanna make sure that my background has some variation in it, so some light areas, some dark areas, areas that are more purple, more blue. So I'm gonna start with a little bit darker at the top, so I'm grabbing a good amount of blue paint. Can you see that? I didn't squish it in there too much. I really just kind of picked up a little blob. Maybe not quite that much because I want a little hint of my Diox purple and a little hint of black, as well as just a little hint of white. So I just have all these colors kind of marbled on there. I'm gonna pick a section up here at the top. It doesn't matter where. And I'm gonna use half foot pressure. See how my brush is bent just a little bit? I'm really not scrubbing, I'm just kind of mushing it around to cover the canvas. I'm not worried about my colors blending. I'm only worried about covering the canvas. Don't worry about making cloud shapes. Don't worry about scrubbing this too much. In fact, if you can tell, I'm really not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. Every time I go back for more paint, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of a different mixture. So that time I just picked up blue and a hint of black, maybe a little bit more white than last time. I'm gonna start just below where I left off. Kind of thin that paint out a little bit, spread it around. And then with light pressure, see that it's really just the tip of my brush. I'm just gonna lightly take it up into that color just so I don't have a hard line. They don't need to blend perfectly. Don't worry about that. I'm still just worrying about covering the canvas and getting, getting rid of hard lines. A little bit of blue, a little bit more purple. I don't think I'm gonna pick up black this time. And a little bit of white. And we'll kind of start that over here. See super light pressure there. Work kind of quickly here. Don't obsess over anything you see. Seriously, I know I tell you guys that all the time, but then there's always somebody who still obsesses over it. Just don't. Just get your colors on there. Do it a little on the quick side because we want to make sure that we have just a little bit of this paint slightly damp for the next part. If it does happen to dry before the next part, it's not that big of a deal, so don't stress about it. But if you can do this quick enough and with your paint not scrubbed out too thin, then you should be fine. More blue, more purple, just the tiniest hint of black that time, and a little bit more white. As I move down, I'm gonna start picking up a little more purple and a little more white. Don't be afraid to take it up into that previous section. You don't wanna have like a patchwork, you know, where you've got these areas that are very distinct from each other. We're just trying to make this kind of look like space, just really, really loose and free. Let's get a tiny bit of purple, uh, blue, sorry, 
a little bit more purple and definitely more white because I'm starting to move down so I want it to change a bit. If you scrub this too much, you're gonna make your paint very, very thin. I know typically when we use this brush, we do quite a bit of heavy scrubbing, but that is not what I'm doing here. Again, notice the pressure. It's really just the tip of the brush like that. See how my brush isn't bending? That's what I'm doing here to blend those sections in. But you wanna get the bulk of the paint off of your brush before you do that. That's why I'm laying it down right below where that line is. Little blue, more purple, little bit of white. So see, I lay it down right below. I don't lay it down into that area because there's a lot of paint on my brush. And if I lay it down up in here, I'll just cover it. As I've got that paint spread out, now I can come up on the tippy toe of my brush and just break into that previous section so I don't have any hard lines. I think I'm just gonna pick up a bit of white that time. I didn't pick up a ton, but it's the only color I did pick up. There's still some blue and purple on my brush and even just a hint of that black. Don't worry about making particular shapes. Just work on getting a variation of color and a little bit different every single time. Let's throw a little extra purple into that. Super light pressure there. Tiny bit of blue, tiny bit of purple, actually maybe more purple and a good amount of white. I think I might be done picking up blue. I've got a lot of blue in here. I wanna see a little bit more of that purple. If something is too dark for you, like I feel like this is a little dark, I'm just gonna come in and grab some white. Now I can lay it right over that, but I'm gonna do the same thing. Same type of brush stroke. So a little bit heavier pressure to apply that paint and then soften the pressure to break it up and pull it into some other areas. I'm gonna get just a little bit of purple, not a ton, and a good amount of white. So this is a very simple version of the space that we usually do. A lot of times we really focus on kind of building layers and then we glaze. And every time I do that, I get questions about can this be done without the medium? Because a lot of you don't have matte medium or just don't like to use it or you know whatever your reason is. So I kind of worked on this to come up with a simplified way so that you can do that without using the medium. So if there's been one of my past videos with space that you've wanted to do, but you don't have the medium, try this technique. So even like the Starry Night at Stonehenge, you might be able to do that with a technique similar to this. Or I can't remember what I call, I can never remember what I call my paintings, the purple, sky with the trees. We did a little over a year ago. So you can try any one of those with this type of technique. Down toward the bottom here, I'm just picking up white. There's still quite a bit of those colors in my brush. So it's not coming out pure white. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom of my canvas because I know I'm gonna paint over that anyway with the ground. But as always, if you're not sure 
where exactly you want your ground to be, go ahead and take this all the way to the bottom. I'd rather have you take it all the way to the bottom and then not have to try and cover white spots and bring your ground up too high. So there's nothing wrong with painting over the, the bottom if you, if you take the sky all the way there. Because we're just gonna use black, so it's not a big deal. See, I'm not trying to get like the wispy, traily bits in the sky just the color. That part's gonna come next. Oh, there was a little black in that area, that's okay. Just give me a little variation there. Okay, now I think I'm gonna let this dry for just like a couple of minutes. It's just that this paint down here is quite wet and I don't want it to be perfectly wet when we add the next part, but I also don't want it to be completely dry and it's still, yeah, it's still a little bit wet up here. So I'm gonna wait maybe five minutes before I start the next part. In the meantime, I'm gonna come over here and wash out my brush. dry it on my paper towel, reshape it, and leave it laying flat to dry. Okay, I don't think that was quite five minutes, but I think that that's dry enough. It's still a little bit tacky. A tiny bit of the paint is coming off on my finger, but it's not terribly wet. So I'm gonna go to my number six club brush. I'm gonna do the same thing, just dunk it in the water a little bit and kind of pat it on the paper towel. I'm just gonna pick up white and I'm not gonna pick up a ton. See, just a little bit on the end like that. And I'm gonna use fairly light pressure, kind of that half foot pressure. See, my brush is bending. And I'm just gonna lightly start kind of scrubbing this around. See, I'm not necessarily trying to make clouds. I'm just making some little lighter areas. That half foot pressure, what that's gonna do is push the paint to the edge and then make it softer in the back. So let's do that again. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit more paint this time than last time. Let me start right here. Don't try to make cloud shapes, but also don't make worms. Remember, we don't like worms in our sky. So take it in all kinds of directions. And just take it until that color fuzzes out and you can't even see it anymore. Let's do a little bit more over here. And then just a second, I'll zoom you out so we can go all the way up the sky. You know, so it's kind of start in one direction. So I'm going up that way and then I'm gonna push it over here a bit and go up that way. And because the paint that I'm working on is just a little bit wet, see, I'm picking up a bit of that on my brush. I've got a little bit of purple and blue on here. Kind of take it over that way a bit. If you feel like you're getting too much of the canvas texture, like I'm getting quite a bit of the canvas texture there, you can dip just the very, very point of the brush into the water and pat it on a paper towel. And that should help kind of cover it a little bit. Just get it down into there a bit more. But also don't stress it too much because once we add stars, they really help to mask a lot of things. So at first it might just kind of look, you know, like a, like a cloudy mess. But once we add some stars, it will look more like space. Notice that I am kind of taking everything from about here kind of up in that direction. And you don't have to do that. You can go in any direction you like. But I chose to do it that way because of the composition that I'm going for, because my campfire is gonna be down in this corner and then over here I'm gonna have a tall tree that reaches up and I felt like that would be a nice transition to take your eye from the campfire up to the tree and back. So you've got some areas that are quite bright white and some areas that get much more misty and kind of clouded out. Let's go ahead and keep taking this up. 
Even in this darker area, don't be afraid to get some of this light color in there. Remember, we're just using half foot pressure. So for those of you who have never heard me say that before, think of this brush as your foot, as the bristles of the brush as your foot. So if you were standing on your tippy toe, you'd be standing like that. If you were standing flat footed with your toes and your heel on the ground, you would be standing like that. But if you kind of rocked your heels up so you were standing on the front of your foot, you'd be about like that. And that's half foot pressure. And that's really what we're using here. The more pressure you put on the brush, the more you're gonna scrub that paint out and diffuse it. And that's fine, you can do that in places and I may do that in places. But overall, I just wanna kind of create these billowy shapes and I can get that much easier by using the half foot pressure. Take it all the way to the edge of your canvas. Don't keep it squished into the frame of your canvas. I'm just breaking up some of these shapes just a little bit, adding some, a little bit of some lighter spots throughout here. Tiny bit more water, just tap that off. So those of you who have had a hard time making clouds in the past, don't think of these as clouds. These are not cloud shapes. Don't try to make clouds. This is just kind of a, you know, a starry night sky. We can even take those two bits and kind of connect them. See how I did that? If you pick up too much paint, can you see how much paint I'm picking up here? It's really not a ton. There's a little ball of white paint, but if you pick up too much, you're gonna have a really hard time distributing that. And then you might end up with these really hard shapes like that and end up getting really frustrated. If you do happen to pick up too much paint, just wipe it on your paper towel real quick and then move on. Just break up that darker area a little bit with that tiny hint of color that's on my brush. And this dark corner, I don't wanna make it too light, but I'm just gonna scatter some of this right up in there. Just wherever you feel like it needs it. Make sure you stand back every once in a while. I just picked up a tiny point there. Just get a little bit more in there. Stand back once in a while and look at it and just decide if it looks balanced, if you want it brighter anywhere. I picked up a good amount of white there, much more than I have been using. I really want to brighten it right down here. Not too bad, a little bit of a kind of a dead spot right in here. So I'm just gonna pop a hint of that highlight color. And I think I'm about ready to do the stars. I don't think I'm gonna do much more than that. Maybe in one little spot right here. Pull it into that bit there. Now I'm gonna take my half inch flat brush. I'm gonna wet it in my jar pretty good. And I just lightly wiped a little bit of water off. There's still quite a bit of water in here. 
I'm gonna pull a little bit of this white out and mix the water in my brush with it. You don't want it flowing like pure liquid, but you want it quite a bit thinner than it normally is. Pick up as much of it as you can. I'm gonna do some very small stars, very controlled. So what I'm gonna do is use my finger across the top of my brush and just kind of pull it like that. That helps you kind of control where they're going a little bit more so you're not you know, painting your entire living room in stars. If you go all the way across, nice and slow, then you get very fine spray of stars. Let me zoom you in there so you can see. So see, slow pressure and a very fine spray of stars. But if I only do the top half of the brush and I flick it quickly, then I get much larger stars. And don't be afraid of adding too many stars. Almost always when we do stars, I see somebody's painting and they say, I went a little over overboard with the stars. I don't think you can go overboard with stars. I like lots and lots of stars. If you get your brush nice and close and go slow, you can create these little bundles of stars. So that's nice for an area that you might not like. Just kind of flick some stars over that little spot and it kind of helps pulls it all together. Some faster ones on the top half. Get some bigger stars in there. Flip your brush over every once in a while. See, I got some stars that are quite big there. If your paint isn't making these little stars, if it's making like stripes, like blobs, then I think you just have not enough water or too much paint in your brush. So just experiment with some consistencies. If it's too wet, then you'll get big blops, big splatters of stars. So if you're not real confident in doing this, just practice on a junk canvas to see, you know, what kind of stars do I get when I add a lot of water? What kind of stars do I get when I flick it like this? I'm gonna add lots of stars down here at the bottom so our trees really stand out. Stand out up here because I'm gonna have a tree up here. Let's add some little spots where there's quite a few stars. This little dark corner, I'm gonna add quite a few stars there. Just brighten it up a little bit. And I think we are about done with our sky. So see that was a pretty easy space scene that we did today. Notice guys, there's still not a brush sitting in my water. The longest any one of my brushes has been in here today is long enough for me to swish it around to clean it. All right, let's paint in our ground. I'm gonna stick with my half inch flat brush, a little bit of water. I'm gonna come into my black, pull some out and mush my brush in it. Make sure that I'm loading up a good amount of black in my brush. Just gonna use the tip of my brush and kind of carve out where my ground is gonna be. Let's see, I think I want it kind of high right here. Move down this way a bit. Maybe about like that. Do yours however you like. Notice I didn't worry about getting a really hard horizon line there. I actually don't want a hard horizon line because it's gonna make everything look really stiff. Can just pick up a good amount more black and just fill in this whole area. There we go. I didn't have enough water on my brush so my paint wasn't spreading real nicely. Much better. Sometimes if you're if your paint is too dry, especially on a canvas that has a good amount of tooth like this one, you need to use just a little extra water or medium, like matte medium, to get it to spread a bit. All right, now I'm gonna take my fan brush and this is a stiff natural bristle fan brush, but use whatever you have. And I'm gonna wet it in my jar a bit. And I'm gonna come into my black and the best way to load paint into a fan brush. You know, usually when we load paint into a brush, we kind of grab it and pull it back and kind of 
flatten it and turn it over and flatten it again. But that's not really the best way to do it with a fan brush I've found. So what I like to do is pull some out and then press my fan brush flat and kind of wiggle back and forth like that. That helps mix the water that's in the brush and it helps really load up a good amount of paint. Also, if you're mixing color, like I'll show you later, that really helps to get the colors mixed. So my fan brush is loaded up with quite a bit of paint. And I'm gonna show you this at a distance, show you an entire tree. And then for the next tree, I'll zoom you in so you can really see what I'm doing. But for right now, I'm just gonna take this top corner of my fan brush and decide where the top of this tree is gonna be. And we'll say it's gonna be right about there. I didn't put any pressure on it, I just kinda of scratched the line just to get me started. Now I'm just gonna use the corner of my brush and start kind of tapping in tiny little branches right at the top. Just using the corner, very little pressure. I'm just kind of tapping back and forth. As I come down, I come out a little farther, but I'm still only using about that much of the brush. You can push a little bit harder as you come down. Let's see, my brush still isn't bending. Now I'm using about that much of my brush. If the paint starts to wear off on that end, just flip it over. Make sure you use about the same pressure that you were just using. I'm using about half of the pressure now from about here to the corner. There we go. Let's get a tiny bit more water. I just touched the very point of the brush into the water. And same thing, pull a little bit of paint out, squidge it back and forth, flip it over, squidge it back and forth. Okay, so I've got you zoomed in here. Let's do another one. Hopefully you can see this a little bit better. We're gonna say it's right about there. I'm just gonna use the corner. I'm gonna come in here and just touch. Just give an indication of those top bits of the tree. Flip it on its side. I'm still just using the point. Pull some out to either side a little bit. Starting to put a tiny bit more pressure, about that much of my brush is touching. A little bit heavier pressure, about two thirds of the brush is touching now. about half of it from about the center over. See, a fan brush doesn't have to be intimidating. I know that we look at the fan brush and we think it looks so different from another brush, from a normal brush, that there must be something magical about it. We must be using it wrong. There must be some kind of a trick to using a fan brush, and there's not. Let's come in here and break up this horizon a little bit. So I'm just gonna use the center of my fan brush. And I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure. I mean, you can't really see that right there. I'm just kinda breaking up that line. See that? It almost makes it look like there's some grass or something there. So what I did was I touched it to the canvas like that and just lightly flicked it up. I'm not pulling it up, just kinda flicking it. See, it's all in my fingers. So just kinda flick it like that. Another thing you can do is kind of like what we did on the trees, put it so that the bristles are just above the horizon and then kind of push. And since everything below it is black, it doesn't matter if you come down into here, that's fine. Try it both ways and see what you like the best. You can even do both of them together. Sometimes I like to do both of them because then I don't get a real patterned look on the ground. So there I'm kind of tapping and there I'll swoop it up a bit. Just really break up. I don't want that hard line there. You can even give a little indication of another very distant pine tree there maybe. Yeah, maybe one right there, let's see flip our brush over. All right, 
right, let's do our large pine tree. So a little bit more water, a little bit more paint, squidge it in there. And same thing, I want this tree to be quite tall, so I'm gonna put my little mark right there. But I'm gonna do the exact same thing to get my tree. Now, here's the thing real quick. Now, if you go to add your tree, and when you touch your brush to the canvas, the mark you get is kind of, you know, very, very solid or super shiny, looks very, very wet. You have too much paint on your brush. So if that happens, then I want you to come over to your paper towel, just lay your brush flat for just a second. Let it suck some of that water out of there. All right, so my little marks here at the top. Rotate my brush to the side. Very small pressure, just back and forth, just like we did on these other trees. A little bit more pressure as we start coming down. Because this is a larger tree, I may have to reload my brush halfway through, we'll see. Yep. If it starts looking really fuzzy, like I feel like it started looking a little fuzzy right here, then your brush is starting to get too dry. Don't keep tapping over that, hoping to fill it in because then you'll just get a really puffy looking tree. Still just using the back half of my brush, not the full width. When you use the full width, then you really get that kind of eyelash look, you know, where if you plop it, it looks like eyelashes. So I really only use the full width and push down if I won't be able to see that eyelash look. But in a tree like this, I absolutely would see that. And bring that all the way down to there. We can come back later and just fill in anything that we think is too thin or shaped a little weird. Here's one thing I want you to avoid when using a fan brush and doing pine trees. I see this sometimes and whenever I do, people say they hate their pine tree. So I don't want you to, see there's that eyelash shape. I don't want you to do this and get these very regular branches like that. Pine trees don't look like that. They're very irregular, you know? So one might come out farther than another. Some parts are gonna be thicker or thinner. It's almost, you're almost zigzagging, but don't get too caught up in creating a pattern of zigzagging. Be a little random with it. And I kind of feel like I might wanna try doing a shooting star somewhere up in here. So let's try that and see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the background. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of pick a spot where I think it would look interesting. And this area doesn't really have a lot going on. I mean, it's got the stars and everything, but I think it could be a bit more interesting. So maybe I'll put the shooting star right up in this area. So I think I'm gonna take my palette knife here and I'm gonna use the short edge. So it doesn't matter, you don't have to use this shape of palette knife. Whatever you have will be fine. I'm just gonna use the short edge and I'm just gonna tap it into this white paint. I'm not picking up a blob, it's really just a little bit right on the edge, right on the edge of my palette knife. I'm gonna decide where I want it to end and I think maybe right here. So I'm gonna take this little corner, stick it right there, roll it flat, and then just scrape it back until the paint stops. That actually doesn't look too bad. All right, that's not looking too bad at all. Now I'm gonna let this dry because this black is all still fairly wet and I'm gonna use some quite delicate colors in the next part. So I wanna make sure the black is dry before I move on. And then after I stood back and looked at it, I decided I want to add just, just a little bit more, just a few more trees maybe in the background next to these shorter ones. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. My brush is a little wet, there we go. So same thing, no matter how big your tree is, no matter how big you want it, you're just gonna start the same. and really complete it the same. Let's fill this area in just a little bit. Maybe there's a bunch of trees in here and we can't really see all of them. Just give little indications of some other ones. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna grab a little cadmium yellow medium, and I think I'll stick with my half inch flat, just a little bit of water. Let's grab some phthalo blue, and we'll just start with phthalo blue for now. Now I don't wanna paint in all of this hill. I want the hill with these trees to seem kind of distant. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush, flat, and right about in the center of this shape, I'm gonna start laying this blue down. And I know you can see that blue really strong right now, but as it dries, it will darken, it will become much more transparent. But you can still, if you feel like that's too hard of a line, just wipe your finger over that line to kind of blur it just a little bit. And I'm not gonna take it all the way from one side to the other. Just kind of, well, let's say I want my fire a little more this way, on this side. So I'm mostly gonna concentrate it there. Maybe I will add just a hint of it up to make it look like there's a hill kind of going up right there next to our fire. Let's grab a little point of yellow and just mix it with the green or the blue on our brush. Get kind of a dark green. And I'm gonna start even just a little bit lower, right about where I think I want my campfire to be. And same thing. This doesn't have to look like anything in particular. We're just laying out where those colors are gonna exist. Let's go a little more yellow. And we can totally change all of this and it probably will change. Just use the edge of the brush to streak it over nice and soft. Take a hint of it up there. Now on our large tree here, we wanna make it look like some of the firelight is reflecting up onto the tree. So I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights onto this tree because this tree I feel like is growing out of this piece of ground that we're standing on. These ones are more in the distance, so I'm not gonna highlight them. So I'm gonna go back to my fan brush. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. I don't want this green to be too hot, too vibrant. So we'll just kind of squidge that black into the brush there. I just kind of dunked into the blue and got a blob of it. Squidge my brush into that blue. And just a little corner of the yellow to start. Squidge my brush into that. Now I have a very dark green, maybe just a little bit more yellow. There we go. Now I'm really gonna do this color from about here down. And I'll zoom you in a bit so you can see that. Now because I don't want my tree too light, too far up, because the fire would be really reflecting on it at the bottom part of the tree, I'm gonna start my lighter color where I know I'm okay having it be heavy. So like I want some of it up here, but I don't want it very heavy. I've got a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm gonna start here and see I'm just touching. And really, you can't see that color. Just tapping in a little bit of it. It's okay if it goes outside of the shape that you created with the black in the first place. As that paint starts to wear off, I can take it up higher. Let's go just a little bit lighter though, because we're not seeing much of that. Okay, so I've got this lighter color. I'm gonna start right in here. There we go, and really just on the side that's facing the fire. I'm not gonna put any around this back side. So we'll take this heavy paint through this area we know we want it, and as it starts to wear off, then we can move up to where it fades out. Just give a hint of it. So there's barely any of it up there. Grab a little bit more of that same color, and we can take it down the tree farther. Still just concentrating it on this inside half. And I'm not going to stop at the horizon because again, this tree exists down here where we are. So I'm gonna keep going down past the horizon. Clear down to the ground. Let's lighten that color, a little more yellow. I'm just gonna squidge it into that exact same mixture. So it's just a bit lighter. 
And again, I'm going to start. Nope, let's go lighter. That didn't show up a whole lot. There we go. A little bit of that in the area where I know I want some good light. It's starting to fade off of my brush, so I'm going to start taking it up here. Lighten my pressure to just get a hint. Just a tiny hint of that color right up there. Take this all the way down. All the way down. And lighter, a good amount of yellow this time. Nice and bright in here where that fire is really reflecting on the tree heavily. And from here, I'm really going to start fading it out now. I'm not going to take it up very high at all. Fade that right out. I have kind of a weird line right there. Let's get just yellow. See, I just pulled a little yellow right onto the center of my brush, and I'm just gonna pop a couple bright spots. I can cover up that weird spot there. Right here, the area closest to the fire. Taper it off. Don't just stop it, because then you'll have like a weird line where one color stops. Maybe I do want to take that up just a little bit higher. If you get too light, just grab the next darker color and just lightly tap it over it. All right, let's do the fire. That's what you came here for, isn't it? So I'm going to take my number eight bright, sorry, my number eight filbert, wet it in the jar, wipe it off on the edge pretty good. And let's actually demonstrate the brush stroke that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to get a little bit of red just so you can see it. Notice I just pulled it out onto one end of my brush. It is not a ton of paint. It's not a glob. I just kind of grabbed some and pulled it back. Okay, so just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is remember that half foot pressure with the cloud brush? We're gonna do the same thing here. So, and it's gonna look different on this paper than it will look on the canvas, but the technique is really the same. So I'm gonna decide where I want that color and I'm gonna press my brush flat. Can you see that? My brush is flat. The bristles are flat. And then I'm just gonna lightly kind of pull it in the direction, however I want my fire to go. See how that gives me a harder edge over here and a fuzzed outline over here. I want the outside of my fire to be very fuzzy. Otherwise, it's gonna look kind of cartoony. If you don't want this hard edge on the inside, just kind of come back and nudge it out. Just kind of, I'm not doing the flat pressure anymore. I'm just using the tip of the brush, just very lightly, almost like a little circular motion like that. And just kind of pulling that line out. And that's really what we're gonna be doing. There's that, that flat pressure to get the fuzzy line in the back. And then kind of nudging other lines out with just the tip of the brush. See how it's just the tip of my brush touching right there. Okay, so wet my brush again, wipe it on the edge. I'm gonna grab a little point of white. Not a ton of paint. Now the important thing here when you're doing your fire is, especially with the white, you only wanna make it about half the size of how big you want your fire to be. So if you want your fire to ultimately be about that wide, just do the white about that wide. Same with the height. If I wanted my fire to reach up to here, I would only make my white reach about up to here. So I'm using that kind of flat foot pressure just to slide it on a place. And I'm gonna pull that up. And that blue, I can't tell if that's actually blending in with my paint or if it's just showing through. We might have to let this dry for a minute. Yeah, we're getting blue flames. 
Let's let this dry for a few minutes before we continue. But there you can kind of see the shape and how nice and soft this is by using that sideways technique. Okay, a little bit more white. I think that this is dry enough that we can cover up that blue. So I'm just gonna cover that, make sure it doesn't come back. I'm not worried about what the bottom of this looks like. Don't worry about the bottom of the fire. As I come up the flame, I'm going off of that half foot pressure up onto the tiptoe so I can get a nice sharp little point. Don't worry about putting too much detail in though while we're doing the white. I'm just gonna whiten this out a tiny bit down here. And soften that line just a little bit. Remember to soften the line you come up onto the tiptoe of the brush and really reduce your pressure. See how you're not really seeing any paint come off? But I still have a good amount of paint on my brush. So we've got that. I'm not gonna clean my brush. There's still a hint of white on there. I'm gonna grab just as much yellow. Now I'm gonna start on the edge of this shape. I'm not gonna start into it. I'm not gonna start outside of it. I'm gonna put my brush right on that line where the white is. And then the same thing that half foot pressure. I'm kind of following up the edge of the white, bringing my pressure up to the tip of that flame. And then let's go back in here with the light pressure and just break up that interior line. Same over here. There was a little bit of that yellow left in my brush, so I didn't pick up any more. But let's go ahead and do so now. Remember, keep the edges of your fire nice and soft. And bring up another little piece here if we want. And we'll take just a little bit. I didn't pick up very much paint, see that? It's just a tiny little point. And we'll go across the bottom. You can bring it up in. Don't think of your fire as one dimensional, you know, with dark colors at the edge and the light color in the middle and nothing else. It's a very three dimensional thing. It is hotter in the middle, so it will be brighter in the middle, but you might have a little lick of flame coming up from the bottom, kind of covering that that's a little bit cooler. Now you might get, you might get to this point and especially the next part after this and think, oh, this fire looks terrible. You might be tempted to mess with it and try and fix it or scrap it all together, but I encourage you not to. I know this looks really fake right now. I'm just gonna clean that color off. So I have a clean brush. It looks really fake right now, but just keep going. We're gonna add just like two layers to our fire and that should be good. So just a little bit of red, see not a ton. Same thing, I'm gonna start on the edge of my yellow. Flat pressure. With this red especially, it's important that it's nice and faded out on the edges. I'm gonna trail that up a bit. Get it in there to break up that line. Try to keep the red away from the white, but definitely let the red go into the yellow. I'm just gonna tap that a little so it's just a little softer there. Let's do the other side. I might have grabbed just a little too much paint. See how much paint I have on there? I think that might be too much. So I'm just gonna wipe a bit of that off. I'd rather you start with not enough paint here and have to get more. Up this edge as well. See, this looks really cartoony and fake. I'm not worrying about that right now. That tiptoe pressure, just to make sure that's dusted out nice, but not, not going into the white. Break up that line a bit. And we'll take a little bit across the bottom. Mostly my tiptoe pressure here. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush again. Let's go back into the yellow. Just a bit of yellow. 
gonna go back into the area where my yellow meets my red and mostly the tiptoe pressure now. See that? Because that red is still wet, it's blending a bit. And I'm mostly, like I said, just using that tiptoe pressure, just like that, just the very tip of the brush, kind of blending and pushing that yellow into the red. And since this is the yellow, you can take it into the white a little bit. You just wanna avoid getting the red too much into the white so you don't get pink fire. Unless you're going for pink fire, in which case have at it and I would love to see a photo. I did kind of like the way that white looked when it had a little bit of blue in it. So doing some blue fire, maybe with a hint of green, that might be really, really pretty. Maybe I'll have to do that sometime. Kick that into our red there. So you just kind of like tapping a tiny, very light scribble. Very light. Let's get a hint of it right up in here. just the tiniest pokes of color here. See that? Almost no paint on my brush. And yeah, my poor little filbert. You might be able to see the little bristles poking off of it because I'm so aggressive with this brush. I scrub him quite a bit. <laughs> but this is still my filbert that I go to time and time again. I have another one, another number eight that I next to never use. It's in perfect shape, it looks lovely. But I just love my, my damaged old filbert. See how he's got little curly bristles <laughs> poking off. But I like that. Okay, I didn't clean my brush. Still have yellow on it. Again, just a little poke of white. Tiniest bit of paint. Let's go into the white area and I'm almost just kind of dabbing it. If you feel like there was too much yellow on your brush and you're transferring a lot of yellow, or maybe you picked up a lot of red, then just clean your brush before you do this part. I wasn't too concerned with it. I didn't have all that much paint on my brush. Again, when you're adding this white, try to keep it away from the red as much as possible. And you can go back and forth and add as many layers as you want. You know, once you're done with this white part, if you feel like your yellow is lacking a little, you wanna add a little bit of yellow back, go for it. If you wanna do some more red, do it. Just because I'm doing it in two layers doesn't mean that you have to accomplish it in two layers. And if you end up getting exactly what you want in the first layer, perfect. It's not too bad. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off, pick up a little yellow. I'm just gonna touch up some of these yellow bits. And then I think, I think I'm pretty happy with my fire. Let's get a little extra water and come over to my yellow pull some paint in, and we're gonna do something very similar to what we did with the stars. See how thin that is right there? It's got quite a bit of water in it. I'm gonna pick up as much of that color as I can. Hold my brush like this with the edge pointing toward the fire, and we're gonna add some sparks up at the top. And I'm just gonna grab the tip of the filbert, kind of flick. I'm not gonna go overboard with these ones. Just add a few little shoots of sparks. Cleaned off my brush, let's grab a little black and we can start doing like the, the rocks or wood or whatever that our fire is sitting on. So I'm gonna use the edge of my filbert. I'm not using it flat. I'm just gonna use the edge and just kind of mark out some little rocks or something. See, nothing real specific. This is why I told you not to worry about what the bottom of your flame looked like. Because we're gonna cover it anyway. You can bring some little bits up, out, poke them down into the grass a bit if you like. Whatever you wanna do. Let's keep some of that black on our brush and I'm gonna add like a stone or something over here where someone might sit to kinda hang out and 
enjoy the fire. So I'm just gonna kind of pull down a random shape. Don't, don't try to make it something real specific. See, it's a fairly random shape. I'm gonna get a little point of white, just a bit. And we can throw some, just little highlights onto here. And onto our rock. So wherever you want to say the rock is kind of facing the fire, put your highlight there. I wouldn't put too much on the top because otherwise it's gonna seem like it's facing the fire and not really a place where someone could sit. But see how just putting those little highlights there said that that part's facing the fire. And it doesn't matter where you put them, put them wherever you want. If you don't like it, paint it over with some black. I might have gotten just a little crazy back toward the back of the rock, so I picked up some more black. There. See, it's easy to take it away. I know I harp on you guys about this all the time, about not settling for highlights you don't like. But it really is so easy to just take it away. Tiny little pinpoint of white, and we'll just add some, make sure there's some nice bright spots on our rock. We're almost done. I have one more thing I wanna do to kind of pump up the life in the grassy area, and then we're done. But I'm gonna let the rocks dry for a few minutes. Okay, to finish up, we're just gonna add a little bit of texture into the grass, and so I'm gonna go back to my fan brush. Again, just a little bit of water on it, not that much. Just tap it on the paper towel. We'll grab a little bit of blue, squidge it into the brush. Some yellow, squidge it into the brush. You know, I think I'm gonna put just a tiny hint of black in there, just to darken it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna use that texture where I touch the tip of the brush to the canvas and then lightly flick upward. So I'm gonna kind of cover the bottom of these rocks, make it look like they actually exist in the scene rather than just being plopped on top of it. Same thing at the base of this rock. I know this color kind of blends in and that's okay for this first color. Let's take it up our hill here just a little bit. Don't go over your fire, but just get right up to it. Just a little bit back here, just to break up the texture. Let's get just a bit more paint. up over the base of that rock. Let it taper out as we get close to that tree. Let's throw a bit more yellow in there. Just kind of go back and forth with your colors. You can get all kinds of colors in there. See, it's just very light pressure. Don't put too much pressure on the brush. Otherwise your grasses will be too big or too blobby. It's almost like I'm just kind of stabbing at this point. Keep that brighter color toward the fire and let it taper off this way. Maybe let's pull, let's see, we'll go a little bit more yellow in here. Brighten it a bit. Tiny point of water. And I think I'm gonna grab the tiniest bit of red because that's gonna help it seem really warm even if it still looks green. And maybe it'll indicate the fire reflecting on the grass just a little bit more. See, it's still green. It's just kind of tamed down a little bit. Actually, I feel like I want just a little bit more red in there. Let's try that. That's better, see how it's just warmer than the rest of the colors in the grass. Use the edge of my brush there to get in tight to the fire.
up over the front of this rock a little and let it taper off out toward the tree. I just wiped that off on my paper towel and I'm gonna get as much yellow as I can on its own. Just add a few little bright pops and then I feel like I'm probably done. Mostly right here next to the fire. And now I'm gonna sign it. And I want you to notice that at no point during this painting did a brush sit in my water jar. So the answer to the question, how long is too long in the water jar is anything longer than what it takes you to wash the brush is too long. And there's your campfire under the stars. I hope you enjoyed this painting and I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable now with a fan brush. It's really not as scary of a tool to use as a lot of people think. I'm really excited to see what you guys do with this painting, so make sure that you find me on Facebook or Instagram. Just search for Painting with Jane and you'll find me. And then make sure to tag me in it so that I can see your version of the painting. Thank you as always for painting with me, everyone. And I'll see you next time.